The deliberations in Geneva on autonomous weapon systems are situated within a triangular area of great potential insight, one within the United Nations and across the street of the house that Harry de Nantes built, a second very near at CERN, and a third across the lake at Coligny. We should be receptive to this insight, since autonomous weapon systems and the emerging technologies that empower them will impact global security. I start with all the great potential of nations united, bound by norms, even during armed conflict, a concept best epitomized by international humanitarian law. IHL affirms that even as we recognize that armed conflict is unfortunately inevitable and thus sore considerations of national security, similarly inevitable is the humanity we share. We recently celebrated seven decades of the adoption of the Geneva Conventions. It is also 160 years since Henri Dunant saw the ghastly images of the aftermath of war, with wounded and sick left to die after the Battle of Solferino. From the shock of war in the mind and heart of a gentle man, through the adoption of the Geneva Conventions, all the way to today, we are left with a framework that still allows us to have discussions on issues and topics that would not have been imaginable to most in the time of Dunant, as well as those who shared the pen and the adoption of the Geneva Conventions. International humanitarian law this collective tool at our common disposal, almost two centuries around and still in development, which nevertheless has roots in all cultures that share a common humanity. IHL has allowed us to have a meaningful discussion on how emerging technologies may transform everything we do, including the conduct of warfare, and to have that discussion with a firm conviction that these developments are not in silent vacuum, which can be dangerous for global security. Science and technology is moving incredibly fast, giving humanity a glimpse into the beginnings of the universe, a few kilometers away from here, at CERN. CERN is one of the greatest scientific undertakings in the history of humanity. Still, there were many who were concerned, some even fearing, I remember, that it might be possible to create a mini black hole, that this thing at CERN will destroy us all. Some of the greatest scientific minds got together and said, don't worry, we know what we're doing, and we believed them, and they were right. The incredible breadth and scope of the work at CERN is not only evident through what the research there aims to unravel, looking at the moments just after the Big Bang, but also in how it goes about it, through international cooperation, through great scientists working together, sharing the knowledge and insights. Which was not the case of a cautionary tale. Imagine during a year without a summer, in a house called Villa Diodati, on the other side of the lake at Colony. The tale I mention is uh, of Dr. Victor Frankenstein, the scientist in the novel, not the creature as many still believe. There is a reprimand in Mary Shelley's voice for Victor's stubborn individualism, for his need to have power over nature, but mostly her admonishment is for the abandonment of the being he created in that solitude. She doesn't waste any ink on whether he should have followed his impulse, she takes it as such, but for the way Dr. Frankenstein worked, created a new being into existence and just left it to its own devices without taking adequate precautions. This is why I mean that we sit in a triangle of great potential insight that may give a moment of pause to consider what we've achieved here in Geneva, the place where through cooperation and strong multilateralism, international humanitarian law was founded as being built still, where the pinnacle of cooperation together with a scientific method has offered us glimpses into the first moments of the creation of our universe where a young Mary Shelley was to have a lucid dream of great consequence and a stern warning. In all the places in the world, in all the realms that are working to fuse new technologies into security matters, above all artificial intelligence, but also in others, this is the group of governmental experts that has gone farthest to create a framework to guide humanity's common work and create a substantive trajectory of where to go next. Together. The alternative is not the absence of work in this field, but work in secret and in silence. Development of technologies without the possibilities to check what the others are doing, without a platform of it for exchange, for diplomatic signals, even perhaps stronger posturing. Without the possibility, in other words, to communicate, even in adversity. Such is the most dangerous possible path. Ambiguity, incapacity and intent, instead of the greatest possible degrees of transparency and communication. So, in closing, I commend this group for choosing the well-led path to be walked together 
instead of dark paths walked alone. And thank you for letting me walk with you. It has been a great privilege and immense honor to chair this group at this important moment.